Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so we are fast approaching Halloween and I wanted to do something really spooky and fun and also simple and doable for painters of all ages in case anyone wanted to have some fun family paint parties this season. So we're gonna do a really fun and easy scarecrow silhouette today. And I'm going to use my four standard brushes that I use for most of my classes from my little brush kit. Uh, and that's my large square brush medium sized pointed brush and then it comes with two detail brushes as well. One small and one extra small. I'm gonna get all four of those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that we're going to start with for today's background step, really simple. We have these sort of fittingly candy corn colored uh, starter colors, which is just going to be yellow, orange, and white. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're gonna start today's uh, course with a lovely and big and super simple gradation here, going from orange down to yellow. And you can start from the top down or really from the bottom up, it really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of white just to up the opacity there of my colors. And I'm gonna sneak in a little bit of yellow too, because I wanna start with a pretty bright orange up here. I don't wanna to go too dark. And that's why we're just doing these two light colors today too. I thought about adding red or adding purple or going from red to purple. But I decided instead to just stick with the super simple two color gradation because it makes a nice contrast with the black. And I was like, well, this is a simple one, but I like the way that those colors contrast. It's just so very Halloween. So I'm just pulling that orange down, maybe about a third of the way or so. And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white. Don't wanna go too light here. We're gonna get a gorgeous yellow orange. It's going to go right in between there, working our way down, and don't be afraid to come up into that orange because we want to blend them together, okay? We're working from our way darker down to lighter. So don't be afraid to go all the way up into the last color. I'm just using my brush here as a tool, not very much paint. And you can always add some more darker color or lighter color right back on top too if you get too blended. This is a really good practice piece if you are a newbie blender. Really good dexterity practice as well. Get your brush going there. All right, and I'm gonna just kind of smooth this out a little bit. Long, wide brush strokes going all the way off the canvas there. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this yellow orange down here. And I'm gonna start moving into just yellow here at the bottom. A little bit of streakiness there. I'm gonna rinse my brush just to make sure that I don't bring the orange too far down sneak a little bit of white in there. We're gonna start with very light yellow here at the bottom. And the other side of the gradation and that's going to just come up and meet your yellow orange. Very simple. And if it's streaky, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It'll still look good because we have a lot more to do with the second part of today's class. Okay, just blending to that nicely until I feel that it's looking pretty good. And then once I get it pretty good, I'm gonna say that's not just good, it's good enough. 
and then we're gonna step away and let this layer dry and come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and super simple, just some black here on our piece of palette paper for the second part of today's class. I also rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on in. Going to just grab my black and add a little bit of water. I have my medium sized brush right now. And I'm going to do just some little ground area here. So we are on a farm here in our imaginations today. So it's going to be pretty flat but not super flat, okay? So just like a dirt ground. And we're gonna have some grass poking out here as well, but for now, just black. And just getting that all filled in, super simple. We're just gonna be doing silhouette work for the rest of the class. Unless, of course, you'd like to add anything. I always like to see my students get creative. I've seen all sorts of things from little alien invasions to hidden where's Waldos and pet dogs added <laughs> and all kinds of great painting variations. So feel free to get creative. And if you do get creative or if you're painting along, I do have a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can share your work. I'd love to see your painting or anything that you're creating. We'd love to have you over there. Okay, so I have my little ground area. I'm gonna work from the ground up here. And I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush now. I'm just gonna add a little bit of grass. So we're gonna go right across here and kind of put it in little tufts in some areas. And then maybe in other areas, there's not so many little leaves, little blades of grass. And we're just kind of using our ever so slight pressure with our second to smallest brush. Feel free to use the smallest if you would prefer. And it's better to have a little bit of that sort of scruffy canvas texture showing than it is to go over these again and again and have them end up being really thick. Okay, we're just working our way across, just like so, super simple. All right, so now we have our horizon. We're gonna be doing the painting kind of in two halves. So on this half, we're gonna have our cute little scarecrow and a little garden fence. And then we're gonna have some corn on this side. So I'm gonna work from my right-hand side over here. We're gonna start with the corn. Okay, but make sure to leave plenty of room still for your scarecrow and of course your fence if you want to add it as well. Okay, so let's build some corn stalks. So we're gonna start with just a straight up and down line. And I'm gonna go kind of thin with it. It's okay if it gets kind of thicker as you come down. Okay, and then the top part here we're gonna kind of trail it off. Very, very, very thin line. And then we're gonna come back down and kind of use our brush to push down on either side and create some leaves. And then in some areas, the leaves are gonna be sort of droopier. It takes that sort of hook look. Okay, but then other areas, be a little bit less droopy, a little straighter. And this is where the corn grows, right there. So you can kind of thicken up those areas like so. And I'm gonna leave the top part for now because I'm gonna come back in just a minute and add little final details with my smallest brush. But we're gonna do just these sort of mid-size details right now. And We'll work a couple stalks at a time, perhaps, and just work our way over until we get, mm, I'd say between half and a third of the way over. These can be time consuming. So in my original, 
had a lot, but I've decided to do a little bit less today. And I have these main lines coming up and down here. But then once we get in here, we start filling things in. We have to keep in mind that there would be stalks coming from behind as well. So we're actually going to do little background stalks too to make it nice and thick, nice little thick corn patch. And these would have the little leaves just in the same way. Okay, and then maybe even one further back. But as the corn kind of grows together, it's going to kind of thicken in. So it's not like, so the first first layer that we see here in the front is what I'm sort of starting with. And then as it goes further back, you'll see kind of less and less detail. So just kind of little brush strokes here and there and just kind of filling it in like so. You still want to see a little bit of that pretty gradation though in the background. So that's about the thickness that we're going for there and you can kind of just build your own little cute corn patch, corn field, corn patch. As you can tell, I'm not from one of the corn producing states in the United States. Although growing up, they did have a corn maze at the little pumpkin patch that we used to always go to. So I've seen corn growing. <laughs> Um, but not been through so much the Midwest here in the U.S. where we grow a lot of corn. Let me know in the comments section if you're from one of the great American corn states or perhaps you're from a different part of the world where they grow a lot of corn too, let me know. Here in the high desert, we grow arid crops like chilies and walnuts and pistachios and avocado and things like that. And there's definitely corn grown here as well, actually. Corn works for an arid crop as well. I don't know why uh, we don't have more corn agriculture because certainly the native people will grow it here. I know because I eat a lot of great local corn masa or american-made corn masa there's definitely roots to this region quite literal agricultural roots <laughs> okay and just working our way over however far you want to go over it is just fine. I think I'll do a few more little main stalks here in my corn forest. Yeah, I think that's just about right. Just like so. Okay. Okay, getting those in betweeners as things go into the background. They're going to get smaller, they're going to have less detail. Just in general, in painting. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Liking how it's coming together. Make sure you have some leaves coming off of each stalk. But you don't have any lonely stalks. I'm not sure if it's corn harvesting time yet. I think it's just about time for it. But in my imagination, there's still corn on these stalks. So some of these are a little bit 
batter with their delicious gold bounty. All right, let's grab our smallest brush for the top parts and any other little final brush strokes that you might want to add down below here just for a little bit of a, a different brush stroke width. Nice. Okay, and then let's go a little bit more water in our paint here. Okay, and then from the top of each of these, we're gonna come up and we're gonna have little curved brush strokes coming down from the top on either side, very thin brush strokes here. Okay, not a lot of thickness in these guys. They're very wispy, little corner tops. Like so. You don't want an absolutely perfect pattern either. If they're a little bit random, that looks good. Because they're kind of coming up from all different ways, like a little crazy hairdo. Oh, which way? Just like so. And some of these corn tops here in the background would be ending a little bit lower down. Just adding in some thinner brush strokes too. Okay. Almost finished with our little corn area for our whimsical little Halloween harvest land today. So cute. Okay. Just a few more little corn tops. Make sure you got all of them. Exercise patience. Kind of reminds me of the palm tree tops that we've done in a few paintings. Only a little different. So many patterns in nature. Lots of similarities. Okay, and this last guy, don't forget him. Okay. One more. Looking good. Just solidifying a couple of these. And then I don't have very much little grass texture anymore over here, so I might want to add a few more. Little brush strokes there at the bottom and nearby, perhaps. Always healthy to provide your crop with a cover crop at the bottom. Okay, that looks great. Moving right along, gonna grab my medium sized brush again to start out with my stair, my scarecrow. I want some kind of thicker lines. So just loading my brush up with paint and I'm gonna kind of center my scarecrow now in this section that I have left. And I'm going to start just with the post and I'm gonna work my way up with a slight angle here. Okay, we have our post. We don't want to go too angular though. Okay, let's 
just about right. And then I'm going to do like a little T. And that'll be his arms sticking out on either side. And then we're going to thicken it from there. So this is going to be his like torso area. I'm gonna do two little slight curves for his waist. And then we like put a shirt on our scarecrow and the shirt has been flapping in the wind. So it ends up tattered. So I'm gonna do a little tattered bottom. of some fabric okay and then i'm going to end up filling this all in that will make a little bit more sense once it's all filled in you can kind of adjust the shape push that out a little bit So it's as if it, there's some parts of the shirt that have been like ripped off and tattered here, but we still have a part of the shirt shape right there. Okay, and then filling that in. Very nice. Okay, and I don't want him necessarily to be too slim. Fill out that torso a little bit. Okay, and this is gonna be the little neck area. Do a little curved brush stroke like so. And then for the arms, we're gonna have little sleeves. Slight curve there almost ready to bring my smaller brush in. Feel free to do that if you need it. Okay. A little bit of shoulder there. Evening them out a little bit. Okay, looking pretty spooky. Great. Okay, gonna grab my smallest brush now. Little teeny tiny guy. And I'm gonna do little sticks coming out from the sleeves. Very small brush strokes. Some of them might have like little additional segments on them. Very slight brush strokes there. Okay, and then this is gonna be the neck. So I'm gonna push that up a little bit. And then for this collar, we're gonna have some Sticks poking out of the collar as well. Or straw, I suppose. Or a mixture of both. Okay. And then our neck is right here. I'll take it a little bit higher. I'm going to start with my pumpkin shape, which is going to be a big oval about like so and then this face is a little bit detailed but i'm going to start with my nose here right in the middle and i want to make this a little bit bigger than maybe i want it so that i can come back and fill it in and then i'm going to do two cute little buck teeth right underneath like so and then a smile which is also gonna have another little buck tooth down here. And I'm gonna fill this in real quick. Down 
down here so that you can see the shape that we're going for. Okay, so it's pretty small. Feel free to use a pencil even if you want. But this is a very tiny brush. And then the eyes, we're gonna go from the nose here and curve around with these spooky sort of angry eyes. Okay, and then we're just going to fill that in all with black, being very careful to leave our little cutout areas. With the background color. There's no going back if you take the black into you don't want to be with this portion, so be careful. Very, very, very tiny, tiny brush strokes. But you should end up with this nice, spooky face. So look at how cute. Now you can put any kind of hat that you'd like on your pumpkin, but I'm gonna do a little top hat. Slightly curved, so I guess kind of more like a little farmer's hat. Right on top, it's looking very spooky indeed. Okay, and just getting that filled in as well, sort of like the top hat on my snowman painting, only the spooky version. Great. Very cute. I think I'm just going to thicken up his post a little bit because he's pretty big. And maybe even add a little bit more of a frayed edge on this side. Just for fun. Okay. I like it. I think I want to take Let's draw out a little further. And maybe take his sleeve out a little bit further. Always starting small, that way I can adjust things if I need to. Cute, cute, cute. Just slightly spooky. Just the right amount of spooky. Okay, great. And then our final little part here, if you wanna add a little something, something. I like to do a little kind of garden post, gate, fence, whatever you like to call it just with a couple up and down lines over on this side just to kind of fill out the space and add another element. Really super simple. I'm just using my medium sized second to smallest detail brush here. Okay, and just really simple for another element. Kind of squaring off the tops a bit. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, and then our final little touch, if you'd like, you can grab your tiniest brush 
I'm gonna add a few birds flying away into the night. Off they go, because our scarecrow worked and they're scared, they're flying away. You can put any other final details that you'd like on your painting. I felt like I needed just a little bit more taller grass here and there, but that is simple and finished. We just created a lovely little Halloween scene. Please let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section below. Love to hear from you. I would love to see your work, so please join us over in the art club. Please hit like if you liked this painting, and that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So until next time, happy Halloween, happy fall, and stay creative.